In this video, we'll see how to create reusable components in an Angular application. So, to get started with this project, uh, I already have uh, an, I already have an Angular application up and running here. So, I have installed uh, Bootstrap uh, to this uh, application, and I'm using uh, a sample HTML code from the Bootstrap site. So, um, if I run the application, you should be able to see a uh, you should be able to see a shopping cart like a carting app here. I'm already using some dummy HTML data from the Angular from the Bootstrap site. Uh, this is a checkout form sample that I uh, copied from the site. So this is what you are seeing on the screen. Now, uh, what we'll what we'll be doing we, we'll we'll try to. So in this tutorial, we'll see how to create a reusable component. So like this portion, the right side of this particular particular page, uh, the your cart thing, we will create a separate component for this particular cart thing. So this uh, the this can be reutilized or it can be reusable. It will be re so we you'll be able to reuse this your cart component uh, anywhere inside your application. So now let's see how to make this uh, cart as a reusable component. Go to your application here. Using the Angular CLI, create a component called cart. Now you'll be able to see that a new component got created here. And what we'll do is we'll just copy the code from HTML code for that cart section from here. And move it into the cart component here. I'll keep it inside a dev here. Save it. And uh, what you need to do is you need to add the selector inside the app.component.html instead of the HTML code. Now, if you save the application and start it, you should be able to see the cart as it is. Now if I refresh the application, you should be able to see the cart. The cart works is showing there. So it's working. <laughs> now we need to make this uh, cart component as reusable. So right now it's showing some hard-coded data. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll be passing something called an input param to this thing. So we'll be using something called an input directive here. And the read input uh, products which will be passed to this application. So based on products, we'll iterate the thing here. As you can see here, it's like we are showing different products here. Product name for the first product, second product and third product. So we'll just simply iterate it instead of repeating the HTML. So I'll just remove these two HTMLs. Now let's iterate over the products array and display it. Product of products. Now you should not be able to see any of the products here because the products array is empty here. Okay, now let's pass some products uh, to this particular cart component. What I'll do is I'll pass it from here. Here you can pass the input products. Now you should be able to see one entry there. Duck name. As this increases, you see more than one. Okay. So 
now let's pass in some products here so what I'll do is I'll from the app dot component here first let's create a, what do you call a model structure for this thing so inside the app I'll create one more folder called model inside the model I'll create one more new file called product.ts now this will uh, will define a model for this thing so it will be product public will define sub some members for this particular class the first one will be name then a description then price number now let's import the same inside the app component So we needing this thing inside the cart component. The type of the product will be product. It will be a product array. Go to your app.component.ts file here. Now from inside the app.component.ts, let's create a couple of dummy products here. So what I'll do is I'll define a variable called products here. Which is of type product array. Now Let's add an implements here, implements ng on it. On it here. Now on ng on it, we'll define a couple of, create some dummy products here. Let's create a couple of product call, let's say. Product equal to new product okay doesn't really take constructor so let's add a constructor constructor where we can pass the name and all so we can add a name description and price so what do you pass whatever you pass in the constructor can be assigned right away name will be equal to name description will be equal to description price will be equal to price okay now if I go back I can simply create couple so it will be like let's, let's simply push some products here so this dot products dot push new product say Angel Razor Razor description is shaving razor price it's 100 that gets added similarly let's add a couple of more products here the other one being Okay, so this can be what do you call shaving cream. Let's add a couple of more. Uh, the other one can be laptop. Lenovo laptop, Lenovo laptop. 
description will be laptop, price will be 1000, Prima, uh, Prima, price can be 25,000, 22,500. So now this product is being passed to here. You can pass it here. So instead of this one comma two, you can simply give it like products. Products. Now if you save and run the project, you should be able to see. Okay, I don't see that. So maybe something's not right. Let's check the console if there are any errors there. Cannot read push of undefined. Okay. If you go to your component.tsd, push of undefined. So, as you can see, we haven't really, we have simply declared the type. We haven't really initialized it. So, now it's been initialized. Now, save and rerun. You should be able to see the data. Okay. Now you can see three products are there, but the data has not been replaced. So I'll, uh, we have yes, still showing the hard coded data. So just go to your card dot HTML here, and instead of the product name, you can simply replace it with product dot name. product dot description the price can it's like here so it will be product dot price product dot price now if you go to your application again you should be able to see it okay so now here you are seeing the price and all the total price we haven't read it's hard coded only this thing we need to implement so now, now now you are able to see how to create a component and pass data to a component now what i'll do is i'll we will also see how to use the rate output directive to emit the data back to the parent component now a thing may be like uh, we are using this as a reusable component right so um, this data it needs to pass it may be the sum and all it calculate inside the component now once these stuffs are already done on click out this particular continue to check out button this price need to be picked up in this parent component so you need so you need a way to pass this price and all to the parent component so for that purpose we'll be using at the rate output now let's define an output emitter to emit the prices to the parent component output price emitter event emitter okay okay now once we are done with the price calculation and all we can simply emit so here uh, we can call the emit function like uh, once the component has been initialized because there isn't much calculation here. So let's uh, add a function to calculate the price. So what it does is uh, let's define one total price. The total price is something that we are, that will be showing here. Total price can be calculated here. So now inside the calculate price uh, method, you can you will calculate the total price of the product and assign it to the total price variable. Let's keep it pretty simple and use a for loop.
pronounced dot length. And so add this thing, and this to your total price will be equal to we'll assign to zero as of now. Equal to this dot products. It shows an error here that this operator plus equal to cannot be applied to times number and number. Okay, so I'll just change this thing to small number, and I'll go to the product model and modify it here. Now it should be good. Okay, and once the price has been calculated, what we'll do is we'll simply emit the price, price emitter dot emit for the particular this dot total price. Okay, so we'll simply add the stuff here. We'll add this event here equal to price limiter here, and inside here, we we'll add a method here which will receive uh, whatever value is emitted. Uh, we'll the console dot log total sum is value. Save the changes. Okay, there is an error here. Expected one. Okay, so go to your app dot component HTML and add. Dollar event here. That should be good. Now go to your application. Now you should be go to your, go to your console. Just check what we have in here. So now, okay, nothing is emitted here. That's because we haven't really called that method there. We just uh, had this here calculate here. So once this thing is initialized, we'll just call this dot calculate price, which will calculate the total price and emit the total price. Okay, so I'll just close this thing. You should see a total price here, 4,600 total of this. And if you go to your inspect console, you should be able to see the total sum is 4,600. Now I hope you understand how we use uh, Angular at the rate input and at the rate output directives to create a reusable Angular component. I hope you find this video useful. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.